Good morning. Welcome in Jesus' name. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of what we call Holy Week. But on Palm Sunday, we especially focus on Jesus' royal entry into Jerusalem as he comes as our Redeemer King, as he comes as the champion of our salvation. With great humility, but we turn to him as our God, as our Savior. Let us pray. Jesus, I will ponder now on thy holy passion. With thy spirit, me endow for such meditation. Grant that I, in love and faith, may the image cherish of thy suffering, pain, and death that I may not perish. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 160, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. <clears throat> Please follow the order of services printed in our service bulletin. 
we worship this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, we are sinful by nature and have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. But we are sorry for our transgressions and pray you of your bountiful mercy to be gracious and merciful unto us. Forgive us for Jesus' sake. Renew us by your Spirit and lead us in the way everlasting. Amen. Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We are forgiven. With boldness and confidence, we may approach the throne to find grace to help in time of need. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. For this morning's Palm Sunday scriptures, we will not be using our um, Passion History. We'll reserve that for Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. So our first reading this morning is our Old Testament reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Where Zechariah points forward to this very special event of Jesus' royal entry into Jerusalem and speaks of its significance in the greatness of the salvation that Jesus brings us. We read from the book of the prophet Zechariah, the ninth chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout! O oh, daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly, and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. Our gospel lesson is Mark's record of those wonderful events that happened on that Sunday before our Lord Jesus died, that Palm Sunday. We read from Mark's gospel, the 11th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, 
he sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered, in, entered it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Here ends our gospel. We confess of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with him once again. Ride on, ride on in majesty.
grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our Palm Sunday meditation is found recorded in the Epistle to the Hebrews where we read in the 12th chapter beginning with the first verse. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. This is the word of God. Sanctify us, O Lord, through your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. In Christ Jesus, our Redeemer King, dear fellow redeemed, I would like you to envision yourself in the Palm Sunday scene. You see a great commotion and excitement coming down the road, an electrifying atmosphere in the crowd as these streams of people come toward Jerusalem on the road from Bethany and Bethphage. At the center of all this excitement is a man riding a donkey. People are cheering and, and chanting something. Many are, are waving palm branches and others are laying them on the road before this man while still others, many others, are taking their outer cloaks off and laying them on the road so that the donkey doesn't raise up dust that would land on this man. All of these things are going on as designations of honor. You finally make out what the people are chanting. They are praising this man as if he were a king. Hosanna to the son of David. That's the royal family of the people of Israel. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. That's the designation for the promised one. Then some are simply calling out, Hosanna, save now, we pray. Those in the dark about this man's identity ask, Who is this? The answer is given. This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. The cheers continue as Jesus enters Jerusalem. Even some of the children join in to sing and, and chant Jesus' praises. Everyone's attention is fixed on Jesus. The day is all about Jesus. And what the people are chanting in his praise and honor tells the whole story. If one but listens. Now, we live about two millennia after this royal welcome. What impact should this have on us as we look back on that day and view it in its historical context? View it, view it knowing the events of the rest of that week. Our text from the Epistle to the Hebrews written to encourage and focus the faith of, of early Christians who were lapsing in their faith, speaks to us on this Palm Sunday, reminding us to keep looking to Jesus. First, our text encourages us to look to Jesus for the strength to endure. Our text actually takes us back to the other side of Palm Sunday event, the writer to the Hebrews had just reviewed the history of Old Testament believers that had maintained a steadfast 
faith in the words and promises of God and the coming of that promised one while facing great opposition from the world and, and continuous challenges to their faith in this life. Then he says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. That was the key to the faith of the Old Testament believers. They stayed locked in on those words and promises of God regarding the coming Messiah. They looked with eyes of faith for that Savior to come for the fulfillment of God's promises. That was what led them to make the choices they did in obedience to God's word. Choices that in this life meant they faced some difficult challenges and real trials and, and testings of their faith. And they didn't allow things or the desires of this life to weigh them down and tie them to life on this earth. They looked for a heavenly homeland. So how do we follow their example? We keep looking unto Jesus. See Jesus riding the foal of a donkey, entering Jerusalem in humility while receiving the praise and honor that was due his name. He was coming as our Redeemer King, the one who would engage the devil in, in mortal combat and win the victory over the devil, crushing the serpent's head through Jesus' own death on the cross. We look to Jesus, and we see how Jesus, with determination, rode forward into Jerusalem, knowing that the time had come for him to make the all-atoning sacrifice for sin, for the sins of the whole world. So how do we follow the example of the Old Testament heroes of faith? They didn't let the, the things of this world, the pleasures or the pursuits of this world, weigh them down. So that they were so caught up in them that they didn't have time for, for their spiritual relationship with God. They never got so overwhelmed by earthly concerns that it cost them their spiritual life. So let us keep the worldly, the earthly, in perspective. Yes, it's going to always be a part of our lives, but let's keep it in perspective. These things all fade away. Jesus taught us, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also we are also warned of sin's power to entangle us in its web. So often, believers are tempted to think that a sin isn't that bad. Isn't that the way of the world? A sin isn't that bad. But after one has fallen into a sinful lifestyle, it can be extremely difficult to ex extricate oneself from sin's snare. The entanglements of sin, when we get involved in the ways of the world, are, are not only inroads to sin, but they make their inroads into our life, into, into our hearts, and, and they take possession of our lives. How many of us have known, even Christians, whose language started to be like that of the people they worked with in the factory? And they just couldn't seem to shake it. 
They took possession of that it, it, it ensnared them. Or substance abuse that can take control of one's body and, and continue to be a challenge for the rest of one's life. And different sins that, that can oppress one's conscience, but, but weigh on one's mind to the, to the point of depression or mental illness. When, when people get caught up in the sins against the, the, the sixth commandment, to leave that sin might mean finding oneself to be homeless. Sometimes it, it is a deep involvement in things that, that in and of themselves are perfectly good in, in sports or other recreation or associations with others. And, and these are fine activities, but then associations and leagues and teams take us away from worshiping our Savior and keeping our lives on a spiritual focus. And once we are involved, it is difficult to give it up, to give up what we enjoy after all, who hasn't heard? People don't have to go to church to go to heaven. That's the devil's way to ensnare people and steal their hope of life away. The opposite is true. People on their way to heaven go to church and worship Jesus, their Redeemer, with their fellow believers. The inroads of the world into our lives is, is all very dangerous and should not be minimized. It is a dangerous world in which we live, dangerous to our faith and salvation. It has been since the fall into sin, Believers of old look forward to the coming of the Savior for the strength to endure. We need to look back to Jesus for the strength to endure. Our text compares living a Christian life to running a marathon. One truly needs endurance and help to make it to the end. And we need to make it all the way to the end. We don't just take an occasional glance at Jesus for inspiration. We look to Jesus. We keep looking to Jesus for enduring strength. The other day, I saw a news clip about a teenage boy who was running his first marathon in L.A., in Los Angeles. With about a half a mile to go, this 17-year-old collapsed. His sister ran out to help him, but she didn't have the strength to give him the assistance he needed to even stand up. And, and so a, a Los Angeles police officer ran out there quick and, and on, got on the other side of the boy, and the two of them together lifted him up and started helping him to walk to the finish line that last half mile. But, but when they got about 100 yards from the finish line, his legs wouldn't move anymore. And so the policeman picked him up and carried him like he was sitting in his arms and helped him and gave him his strength to cross the finish line. He finished the race with the strength of another. We need to run with endurance that we should finish the race. And when we collapse, we look to Jesus, and he will bear us up in his arms. He will never fail us. When the going gets too hard for us, he will carry us across the finish line. You see, it's when we look to Jesus that we attain the victory. You see, when we look to Jesus, we're not looking at just another man to inspire us. We look to Jesus as the fulfillment of our faith. 
Now I'll go back again in your mind to that Palm Sunday scene and take a close look at that man riding on the donkey. You will see that what was said about him, what was written on the placard above his head on the cross is most certainly true. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. This is Jesus, our Redeemer King. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. As we run the race of faith in this life, we keep looking to Jesus. Why? Well, the obvious answer is at the cross of Calvary, isn't it? But our text doesn't start there. Our text tells us something else that is very important for us to know and remember. Jesus is the author of our faith. Think about that, please. That takes us back to before the world began, before sin entered into the world, when God knew, when God already knew that man would ruin his perfect creation. It was at that point that God came up with a plan, with the plan, the only plan that could save us, that could deliver us from, from death and hell. The eternal Son of God is the Word made flesh. You know the opening verses of John's Gospel? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then a little later, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Put that together. The eternal Son is the Word. The eternal Son is the author of our faith. The author of the Gospel. The eternal Word became man. The man, Christ Jesus, who gave his life for us. We are to keep looking to Jesus, who is the author of this plan for our salvation and the one who brought this plan to its completion. He finished it. We are told that we are to keep looking to Jesus because of how he went forward to finish the plan and complete our salvation. Now go back to that scene on Palm Sunday. All those people praising the Lord, honoring him and praying their praying their hosannas remember what that means save now we pray hosanna to the son of david jesus was there that day to answer that prayer not only for those people that were lined up on the two sides of the road and waving their palm branches but jesus was there to answer that prayer for us for you and me Jesus knew what it would take to accomplish that salvation. After all, he authored the plan. And he did not turn away. He knew how exactly how agonizing it would be. And he did not turn away. Jesus looked at the joy that was before him. Not the suffering. And he endured the cross. He showed contempt for the shame, not allowing it to get to him, not allowing the shame of the cross to dissuade him from fulfilling the task, completing the plan. And look where he is now, seated at the right hand of God the Father, the Son of Man, Jesus, our brother, and also the only begotten of the Father, is seated at God's right hand where he makes intercession for us. Keep looking to 
to Jesus. That's the lesson the Spirit would have us take into our hearts and to make part of our lives. Look to Jesus, remembering all he endured for us. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. The first recipients of this epistle were being intimidated by their, by their relatives, pressured with worldly shame and loss, pressured with all kinds of reasonable arguments to turn away from the gospel and, and so turn away from the Lord to the old ways. The Holy Spirit's counsel, keep looking to Jesus. And as Jesus himself said, Take up your cross daily and follow me. Consider Jesus who endured such hostility from sinners. What have we experienced in comparison? Consider Jesus and the hostility he endured in order to save us. Follow him not only to the sufferings, but through the sufferings to the joy, the joy that awaits us. See the joy beyond the cross and show contempt for the world's threats. Endure whatever they throw at you. They are actually very limited in what they can do if we but don't allow ourselves to be weighed down by the concerns of this world. Remember, rather, the joy that awaits us because of all that Jesus endured as the author of our faith, who then finished the job and secured our salvation. Follow him. Lay hold of the joy of eternal life. Weary, discouraged. These words describe me all too often. We dare not allow weariness to break down our faith in Jesus. He remains the rock of our salvation. Don't let the world wear us down. We dare not allow discouragement to undermine our faith in the salvation which Jesus secured for us at the cost of his own precious blood. You see, we have life in his name. Let us go back one last time to that Palm Sunday scene and with eyes of faith let us join the throng of people praising and honoring Jesus. Let us also sing our hosannas knowing Jesus, the Son of God, hears our prayer for salvation knowing that he is the author and finisher of our faith. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing for Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven, our King. Oh, may we ever praise him with heart and life and voice and in his blissful presence eternally rejoice. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, our gracious and glorious King. On that first Palm Sunday, you came in triumph to Jerusalem with people shouting their hosannas and, and children singing your praise. 
that you did not come to reign over an earthly kingdom. You came in peace as the Prince of Peace to lay down your life on Calvary for the sins of the world. Through the sacrifice you made, God and sinners are reconciled. Savior and King, accept our humble thanks for giving the kingdom of heaven to us sinners. O Lamb of God, who came to suffer and die, come now as King into our hearts to reign. Come to stay. Rule us with your grace, forgiving all our sins. With your love, change our lives so that we no longer serve sin, but only righteousness. Cleanse our hearts with the purifying fire of your word and the Holy Spirit. Cleanse us from sin and unbelief and doubt. Give us faith to trust you, courage to confess you, strength to bear our crosses, and zeal to follow you all the days of our lives. O Savior, whose tender heart was filled with such love for lost sinners that you even wept over an unbelieving Jerusalem, knowing the terrible judgment that would befall it, Fill us with compassion for all those sinners who, because of unbelief, are still traveling the broad road to damnation. May we feel compelled to witness your saving name at every opportunity and to join with others in sending missionaries to the far corners of the earth to preach the gospel to every creature. Though many who once shouted Hosanna later denied you and doubtless joined in crying crucify, Fill us, we pray, with your Holy Spirit, that we may always confess and never deny your holy name, glorifying you constantly by holy living. May we who serve you here in faith always behold you in your glory hereafter in the paradise of God. Until that day, direct our prayers through your intercession to the heavenly throne where they are heard because in you the Father is well pleased. Hear us, blessed Jesus, our Redeemer and King. Amen. We pray in Jesus' name. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mighty King, no time can dim your glory. How shall we spread abroad your wondrous story? How shall we find some worthy gifts to proffer? What dare we offer? Whatever of earthly good this earth may grant us, we'll risk for you. No shame, no cross shall daunt us. Accept our gift, a tribute to your meekness, nor shame our weakness with heart and soul and gift. We praise you. Amen. We sing hymn number 367, Hail Thou Once Despised Jesus. Jesus, hail thou Galilee 
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We sing the third verse of hymn 161. Bible class is scheduled to follow the service this morning. On um, this coming week, uh, Monday, Thursday, we will have our um, Monday, Thursday worship meditation at 7 o'clock, and that service does include the Lord's Supper, so um, you may um, uh, register your intent to commune on the sheet that's on the back in the, on the mailbox table in the narthex. Um, on Good Friday, we have our Lenten meditation again at, at 7 o'clock. Um, I didn't put down the question for that today. It, it's it's going to be, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Is the searching question for Good Friday's meditation. Uh, note that our um, April meeting schedule is going to be kind of uh, up in the air because um, that gives us the opportunity to have the best attendance for those for those meetings. And on the last Sunday, when we would normally have a voters meeting, the pastor is intending to be out of town on that April 28th. So 
We're kind of jostling our schedule for that. Are there any other announcements that should be made at this time? The peace of the Lord be with you all. Thank you.